Hi, I'm going to go over the chemistry terminology using this presentation here. Uh, I'm going to start with matter uh, and then uh, work my way from atom to uh, molecules and compounds. Uh, so first of all we have matter. Now matter is anything that has mass, takes up space, uh, and what we usually separate those two into is mixtures and pure substances. Now in chemistry the mixtures uh, are separated out using physical means and the pure substances can only be separated out with chemical reactions. So having a look here, uh, we have two types of mixtures. We have a, a heterogeneous and a homogeneous mixture. So homogeneous mixtures are ones where you can't see the two uh, compounds or two part different types of particles in the macroscopic view whereas a heterogeneous mixture you can see bits of stone, bits of wood uh, and various other types of particles so you can see those uh, and we use different separation techniques based on physical reactions like evaporation or crystallization or filtration uh, to separate these things out to pure substances so let's get off mixtures then and go on to pure substances uh, a pure substance is something that just cans contains one type of particle which could be an element or a compound now uh, when we go to let's go to elements first uh, an element is a pure substance that cannot be broken down by chemical means uh, it has all the same type of atoms uh, and if you go to your periodic table uh, you'll see all the different types of elements that you can have okay so uh, let's just go through uh, an atom before we get into compounds um, atoms are made up of protons neutrons and electrons Okay, so here we have uh, the electrons are on the outside, e the neutrons uh, are in the nucleus, this is the nucleus made up of neutrons that have no charge and protons that have a positive charge. Now when you look at your periodic table you will see that elements are arranged in increasing number of protons and so that there is no charge they match that with an increasing number of electrons in order to be stable all atoms all elements want to have a full uh, valent shell like the unreactive noble gases here so that basically explains two things uh, first of all isotopes uh, the masses in the periodic table are not round numbers because there are a different number of neutrons so even though there's only one proton these three isotopes of hydrogen have different numbers of neutrons so they have different mass numbers uh, that might be 99% uh, this and, and a smaller amount this so the atomic weight will be average and it won't be exactly one uh, in order to gain the full shell the non-metals here will all gain electrons to have a full shell uh, to become like helium, neon, argon, etc. And the metals here will all lose an electron here. So sodium will lose an electron to have a full shell. Potassium will lose an electron to have a full shell. You can see the basic shells here is 288. Uh, we won't get any more complicated than that uh, at this stage. Uh, so just a, a terminology, again the ions are an atom with a positive and negative charge. Those positive ions are called cations and the negative ions are called uh, anions. So what are the uh, other types of pure substances? They're compounds. Now compounds are elements that have joined together uh, so that it is two or more elements joined together so they can either be covalent or ionic. Uh, a simple way to learn these things is ionic compounds are a metal and a non-metal positive metal, negative non-metal, so it's a positive ion, negative ion, and covalent substances are basically two non-metals joined together, uh, and we call those molecules. So to go into a little bit more detail now, uh, they're called uh, the ionic bonds, uh, the, the compounds with ionic bonds, metal and non-metal, they're called formula units. So NaCl here is a formula unit. They stick together because sodium and chlorine wanted to have a full electron shell. So sodiums become positive, electrons, uh, chlorines become negative. So there's an electrostatic attraction between the positive and negative. Um, and as far as their properties are concerned, that is a quite a strong bond. So they have very high melting boiling points. And they conduct electricity when they're molten or dissolved so that those positive and negative ions can move and carry the current. Uh, and they are sometimes soluble because they've got this positive negative charge the water molecules can the pos negative area or positive area of a water molecule can stick to those things uh, last of all they're brittle because all you have to do is slightly knock them 
and then they're all completely repelling the negatives and positives are repelling instead of attracting in this nice structure uh, please remember to call it a lattice so these formula units are just representing uh, the lattice, a repeating unit of the lattice. Next we move on to the other type of compounds which are molecules. So the repeating uh, so the repeating unit of uh, these things are called uh, molecules, they are compounds that have covalent bonds. Uh, so that's the only really acceptable definition of a molecule. It's a compound with a covalent bond. Uh, there's lots of wrong definitions out there in textbooks and on, on YouTube. So that's more about sharing rather than stealing. Uh, so they're non-metals, so they both want to gain an electron. So there are electrons here and what both nuclei are doing are trying to pull on those. And so we say that they're sharing. Sometimes they're unevenly shared, so we say that's a polar covalent bond. Now, if the molecule itself uh, is quite small, uh, we call it a simple covalent uh, molecule. And when that is the case, the uh, intermolecular forces are very, very weak, so it has a very low melting boiling point. Uh, because they don't carry a charge, they can't connect electricity. Their solu the solubility is low because they're usually nonpolar, so they don't have a positive or negative charge. So the only charges available are these random static electric charges we call London dispersion forces. Uh, so the more electrons they have, the better they will uh, have these uh, van der Waals, oh, sorry, not van der Waals, London dispersion forces. The other major type is when they have a polar bond, they have a slight positive so they can slightly stick to each other. Now, a type of dipole-dipole bonding is hydrogen bonding. When it's bound to, when hydrogen is bound to nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine, the polar bond is much, much stronger and so that is the strongest of these weak intermolecular forces. Okay. Lastly, uh, when the molecules are all completely joined up together, uh, and this is the, the other major different type of molecule, so again make sure you use the word lattice, so these are covalent lattice molecules as, oppo as opposed to simple covalent molecules. Now because they have they're completely joined up with covalent strong bonds. Their volatility is quite high. Again, the same. The electrons are sort of locked in position in this tug of war, so they don't conduct electricity. And they're not soluble because they're such large molecules. Uh, and so here are some examples. There's diamond. Uh, there's graphite, which is an exception because electrons can slip in between here and can, can conduct. And that's the last one we're going to discuss today.